It's Chris Seeds, Wootini from GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. <clears throat> this week, I actually want to start off uh, with some complaints about um, spoilers. Uh, so, there was a new trailer for Marvel's Civil War, or, and um, I had watched the first teaser, uh, but I didn't want to watch the trailer. Um, I find that, especially with the Marvel movies... Um, if I want to see a movie, I don't want to see trailers for it, because the trailers will inevitably spoil scenes. Um, and I stopped watching, uh, the Marvel trailers because, um, after Winter Soldier's trailer, because I was all excited and I watched the Winter Soldier trailer, and in the Winter Soldier trailer, they show a helicarrier falling out of the sky. Spoilers, but that movie's old now, so it doesn't count. And, um... You know, you're watching the trailer thinking, oh, that's so cool, what a great visual. Then when you actually go to watch the movie, that's like the end of the movie. Like, that's from the climactic final battle fight scene, and that's not something you should be putting in the trailer. Obviously, when you watch it in the trailer, there's no context, so you don't really understand. But then when you see it in the movie, you're like, oh my god, they put that in the trailer. So... Uh, that's when I decided, okay, no more. I'll watch the teaser, because you just get little teases, uh, and some imagery and, and whatever. But I don't want to watch a full trailer for a Marvel movie anymore, because they tend to put too much in there. Um, so, I didn't want to watch the Civil War trailer, except for the fact that, um, you can't get away from the spoilers, because everyone's like, oh, look at this! And people are posting all over Facebook and Twitter. They're posting still images from the trailer. They're posting animated GIFs from the trailer. So, I saw Spider-Man. I'm a little annoyed that I saw Spider-Man. Um, I'm really hoping that's not Spider-Man's first appearance in the film, because that should be a big, dramatic, surprise moment that makes you go, oh, It's frickin' Spider-Man! In a proper Marvel movie, not just the Sony Spider-Man movies in a proper Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Um, but, like, there he is in the trailer, and if that is his first appearance, and it was spoiled for me, when I go to Seas of a War, if that's his first appearance, I'm gonna be hella pissed. Um, so, even when I don't want to watch a trailer, and I choose not to click on all the YouTube links that everyone's posting all over Facebook and Twitter, I still can't get away from it because people are posting their favorite visuals from the movie as as JPEGs or GIFs. Oops. Oh well. Hopefully they didn't put everything cool in the trailer, and there's still some surprises left in the movie. Um, because that's important. For instance, nice segue there, uh, this weekend I saw 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now, that was a movie that just sort of showed up out of nowhere. And everyone's like, wait, what is this movie? Where did this come from? It's already done. What is this trailer? What is happening? I don't understand. And the trailer was very mysterious and teasy, and it sort of gave you a hint of what the movie's about, but not really. And it was very intriguing. It did what a good trailer should do. It gives you an idea of what the film is about, but leaves you wanting more, because you're like, what's really going on here? I don't understand exactly. So we went to go see it, because we didn't want... It to get spoiled. Thankfully, the people who had seen it already, um, you know, in the previous day or two, um, they actually, no one said anything about it. Everyone's being really good about spoilers for that movie, because clearly it was meant to be spoiler-free. It was meant to be a surprise, and, you know, so everyone's being really good about not spoiling anything about it. Which is good, because Ten Cloverfield Lane is a movie that works better the less you know about it going in. Um, because, I'm, and I'm not going to say anything about the plot, I don't want to spoil anything for you, except to say, it's really good, and you should totally see it, but make sure you go in as cold as possible. Don't know anything about the plot, don't know anything about spoilers, try to avoid them, uh, and just see it, because it's a movie that works better the less you know about it going in. Um... And in fact, um, afterwards, 
my husband and I were discussing, you know, how good we thought it was, but we both agreed that we don't really feel like we're going to buy it on Blu-ray to watch again. My husband's like, well, you know, if it came on cable and it was, like, on TV, like, I wouldn't necessarily turn it off. I might watch it again. But, um, because it, the, the, the appeal of the film is all the twists and turns in the storyline and the surprises and, oh my goodness, now what? Oh, wow. And the revelations. And once you know all of that, I don't know if it's as good watching it a second time. Do you know what I mean? Um, but it's definitely worth seeing, and it's definitely worth seeing in the theater, because by, if you want to wait until Netflix or DVD or HBO, you're going to you're gonna have it spoiled. It's going to get spoiled. Because by then, people won't care about spoiling the movie. They'll be nice about it for, you know, while it's in theaters. But after that, nobody's gonna care and everybody's gonna talk about it. And you're gonna find out what happens. And it'll ruin it. Because knowing, knowing the secrets of the movie going into it, if I had known more about the plot and the surprise revelations, it would have been terrible. And I would not have enjoyed the movie at all. Because you would have known what's coming. Um, so go see 10 Cloverfield Lane. Um, as far as video games, um, <laughs> remember last week when I said that I was going to try Gears of War 2 and probably not like it, and then immediately just go ahead and play that, uh, Sherlock Holmes mystery adventure game? Half right. Um, I did try Gears of War 2. Uh, which actually is the first uh, 360 game that I've played through backwards compatibility on my Xbox One. So, uh, it was weird. Um, it's a straight download. I don't have to put in the disc or anything. Um, so I downloaded it for free. And I... You have to sign into your 360 profile, which was kind of weird. Um, like, to see those graphics. And then to see the game start up with the swirly Xbox logo, I'm like, oh, I missed that. Um, because I don't play my 360 very much anymore. Um, but I played through, like, the tutorial and the first, you know, introductory mission, and then there was, like, the credits and the story sequence, and then when the gameplay started up again, I put it into pause, because, you know, I'd been playing for a while. And I haven't gone back to it. And that was, like, literally, like, almost a week ago. You know, like, I, I started playing it, like, a day or two after I filmed my podcast, so, um days later and I still haven't gone back to it and I don't know why exactly um like the character like I think it's the fact that the story isn't like terribly compelling because the gameplay itself is similar to like the combat in Mass Effect where you're moving through relatively linear levels and you're taking cover and you're shooting at the aliens and then you're duck you know um just minus the fun you know powers uh, if you played Mass Effect with powers, if your character had those. Um, so it's just sort of straightforward combat with different guns and grenades and stuff, and I'm just sort of like, okay. Um, but the story around the combat missions, I don't really care. So I'm just sort of like, eh, whatever. Um, so it wasn't really compelling enough to make me go back to it. And there's a part of me that's like, well, it's a very popular series, maybe I should, you know, give it a tr another, give it more give it, you know, play through a few more missions and see if it can draw me in. And then there's the other part of me that's like, dude, if you can't grab my attention after the first m mission, like, why am I still playing this game? You know? So, I don't know if I'm going to give it another try, or if I'm just going to skip it and go and play Sherlock Holmes. I have not started Sherlock Holmes yet. Um, but, uh, we'll see. Um, I think this one's gone on long enough. And I would like to apologize for my outdoor neighbors there having a birthday party if you heard any shouting and they're having a birthday party next door. Kind of annoying. Uh, so uh, apologies for that noise in the background this whole entire episode. And um, I'll see you back here next week and uh, I'll talk about something else. Bye! <laughs>